Great. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Torelli. I am the chairman of the Orange County Industrial Development Agency and the Orange County Funding Corporation. The date is Wednesday, February 16, 2022, approximately 5.35 p.m. I well, everyone would rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Lights up. Just logging in now, and we have Susan Walski, also one of our new members. Susan, trying to think of and uh, we're only welcome to join us over here. The only uh person who's who's absent is uh, Mr. James Rinaldi, another new member. Okay, so we'll have six. Correct. Yes, we have some guests, if I can point them out. Please do, Chairman. Uh, starting with our legislature, we have uh, the chairwoman of, of the legislature, Kate Benelli, is here. Uh, we have the majority chairman, Tom Faggione, we have the minority chair, Michael Paduke. And we have uh, Chairman of the Rules Committee, former board member of the OCIDA, and we do appreciate him and, and owe him a lot of our gratitude for the time he did serve, Mr. Paul Uh And we have Warren Hallahan, President and CEO of the Orange County Partnership as well. Uh, and of course, Susan uh, Kassoff, our General Counsel, is with us. Um, and uh, Mr. Dennis Brady is our AD consultant that's, that's tuned in as well. And do we have Sue's? Uh, uh, no, we, our paralegals. Oh, we have Joe Porcello was on though. Yes, Mr. Porcello, uh, one of Ms. Katzoff's uh, partners at Busque Holstein is on as well. Great. Anybody else on the consultant side? Do we have? Uh, 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 I think Stephen Meyer. I don't see him yet. He'll be joining us. Uh, Stephen, yeah, that is him. Are you with us? Stephen Meyer? Yep, I'm here. How's everybody doing? Good. Good being there. Uh, Russ Genzel, our bond counsel, is on a plane right now, actually. So Stephen is, is filling in. Stephen's involved in a lot of our projects as well. He's with, He's with Harris Beach as well. Beach. Okay. And we're with RBT. Yeah, sure, sure. Anyone with RBT? Uh, yeah, and Shannon Manisi is on as well from RBT. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Just want to make sure we got all of our consultants. We went through a lot of procurements together. Sure so. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, could we have our guests uh, from the legislature? Uh, could they address us? They wanted to address us early on in the meeting. They probably won't stay with us for the entire meeting. Sure. We're just going to get to the agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, so, sorry to you know interrupt. We were in the building, so we just, you know, new me uh, first meeting with the new board. We wanted to stop in and uh, say hi, congratulate all of you. And also for retiring members, thank you for everything you've done over the past year. I know it's been a long, but a crazy year. I've been privileged of uh, working with all of you. But, uh, you know, Katie and I were just talking. It's been about a year since everything went down. And this it's been uh, quite a year in terms of what this board has accomplished and uh, really put this organization back on the right track. And uh, you know, now you got projects coming before you and things are moving ahead the way they should be. So we're uh, extremely proud of that. So I, we just wanted to stop and say hi. I don't know if anyone else. I would just say that we're sending in and thank you as well um, because we went through a very difficult time. We were kind of doing a little flashback here to where we were a year ago, and it's really quite remarkable of where we are now a year later. Um, the three new board members that stayed, thank you so much. We're very indebted to you. You've done a remarkable job along with Paul. We took him away from you. I'm sorry, we went into the rules committee. You do a phenomenal job and move on. Committee this afternoon, and uh, we had the opportunity to meet not only with Bill but with your new attorney as well, and that was very, very helpful. So, we really do appreciate that. And welcome to the new board members. Um, I've gotten the opportunity to meet some of you uh, or just talk to you on the phone during the interview process. And again, thanks to Paul going through that with me along with our legislative council. Uh, it was a very good exercise, and I'm very proud of that were chosen to serve on this board. I'm very grateful to all of you. And Bill, you're doing a phenomenal job. So thank you. Thank you. And we're not going to take a lot of your time. We just wanted to say hi. And this is your new first meeting, so good luck. <laughs> 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 
the market will get out of your way. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to run. So I, I, thank you. I, I, thank you for all the support. They, yeah. they, 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 no, I, I, very impressive group you got with both leaders here. So. <laughs> uh, we're very grateful for new members actually stepping in. It was an important mindset to get new members on this board for the legislature. We're going to welcome you all here. And I'll tell you that we look forward to working with you in the future. Very near. I would just like to say something philosophical. Oh, <laughs> but very serious. As chairwoman, she has brought names forward for us uh, to vote on, and, and we took those votes and we appointed new members to this board. We put our trust in you, the new board members, as well as the existing board members. I only ask, and I think my colleagues will probably echo the same, that we remind you that that means that we have put the public trust into you. And what you do going forward will be a great representation of what changes have been made and what we can continue to see from this board. And so we have put our trust in you, and we hope that you will put your trust into the public, and the public will again give trust back to this organization. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. If there's anything that can assist you with as we move forward together, just let us know. Thank you. All right, Bill, go on uh, next slide. Business group of notice. Whatever yes. that is. Group of notice. Uh, so I'll ask you to, to explain that. So it's just on the agenda to make sure that it was really given and posted and it was. Cool. Check. <laughs> All right. Um, next line of business the minutes for the OCIDA from January 19th, 2022. I've had a chance to review. I don't have any comments. Bill, have any comments or any of them? Sir. With that, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from January 19, 2022. I'll make a motion. Thank you. We get a second on that. Thank you, Vince. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Test unanimous. We can do that verbally. Yes, you can. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for those that well, in the beginning, we voted on everything individually. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it took like <laughs> it took like four hours for our first meeting. So it was crazy. But that was my. We're getting. It. We're getting. It. We're trying to spring. All right. So I'll jump right into it. Bill Finance. Sure, Finance. I'm going to ask Shannon Minisi from RBT uh, to. Speak on on the uh, January 2022 financials and a couple other subjects. Can you be there? I am. I will share my screen. Uh, does everybody see the um, Excel file that says Orange County IDA and Accelerator? It's here, but it's not that easy for them to see. <laughs> All right. So I'll kind of just talk through it. Um, for January. There was $20,000 of application fees and $7,400 of subtenant rent. So for a total income of $27,473 for January. Now this is including both IDA and Accelerator because during our last meeting, we kind of discussed having them together. I do have them separate if anybody has any questions. Um, total administrative costs of $38,147. The only thing to point out on here that um, UHY coded um, a $2,000 bill to New York State EDC in miscellaneous, which there wasn't a budget line set up. So once we get full access to everything, um, we may go back and reclass that to a different line item, depending on if, if the expense was known and where it was budgeted for. But since we didn't prepare anything, the numbers from January, I just wanted to give you guys an explanation as to what that was for. For projects, there was $163 for legal expense. Building was 24,362. Um, everything here was budgeted for, nothing really out of line with where we were. Um, the only thing is, is that internet and telephones. So there was an $8,000 charge there and there's only $27,000 budgeted. So I don't know the detail behind the bill that got hit there, but I'm hoping that's just a one-time uh, conversion fee or the new vendor. Um, but if, if there's gonna be increased costs here we might have to uh, talk about adjusting your budget for that and then for all yeah. there for a second we'll sure. check, please 
on the internet and telephone, we've had a twenty-seven thousand dollar budget for the year. We've got seven seventy six hundred thirty six dollars in one month. Any explanation on that one, or is that uh, timing? What is that? Uh, you can help with that. Yeah, we're on page nine underneath building expenses, internet and telephone. That does not seem right. We we do uh, we had I think a two thousand dollar charge it was last month that you approved for uh, basically rebuilding our data network. And I'm sure that's in there. Um, I'll have to follow up on that, Mr. Chairman. Just Once I'm done sharing the screen, I can go out and I can navigate and see if the bill was in the Dropbox, and then I, when I come back on, I can I can speak to it. To so the new phone system, maybe that we. Need to do but I don't think we we. I don't think we booked a charge for that expense because we've been just disputing that. So I don't know who it is with that. Um, is is it a, the new IT consultant? Sorry. Was it your new I, IT consultant? Uh, no. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think it's uh, there's a little over two thousand dollars in there for that work. Of oh, IT just for that. Team. Okay. And then we do have the the board will see in a moment. There's an ongoing monitoring fee that is uh, you'll see in the January expenses as well. Uh, but that looks like an exorbitant amount. I do have to verify. Okay, I can go in and pull the detail up once I'm done sharing my screen. Looks like it's missing something. Yeah, no problem. Got it. Thank you. <clears throat> Are you guys still discussing or shall I continue? Uh, you can continue. Okay. Um, so under agency support expenses, there's 6966 in marketing and PR. And then there's contracted expenses of $10,000 for the external projects and programs. So at the end of January, you are at a loss of 52,165 for um, the IDA and accelerators. So Shannon, I, I got to stop you. So uh, we're looking at different versions. Now you sent earlier today, I think, some revisions. Is that what you're working off of? Are your your uh, your report? yes, yep. Right. Yeah, the numbers that were in the version that were provided did not actually ref reflect your January uh, QuickBooks activity. So I don't know if UHY went in and did some more activity for January. But these are reflective as of what has been booked in your QuickBooks as of today for January. Um, just one quick question, no expense here. I was looking at Monday's income and expense summary. Is there a later one? Because I'm not, I can't reconcile to the numbers you're giving. I don't have the, I'm not screen shared with you either. So I don't know. That's why I'm just using Monday's information. Oh, you can't see Shannon's screen? No, I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing all of you people, but I'm not seeing her screen. Um, I'm going into settings to see if but, I'm uh, going in settings. Yeah. So. Sorry, Shannon sent updated financials to Kelly and myself today at three o'clock. I was on my way to Goshen here. So I don't okay. have Okay. All right, let me go to that. I'll share them all with Gordon now. So my recommendation, at least at this point, since we have two different sets, I think we hold off on page number nine. We potentially could need to come back and revisit it um, and go over it line by line on what's the specific differences, or we can push it to next month. We can make that determination maybe after we go through the next couple of pages, which gets into our investments and our physical things that we're looking to pay, and then we can reverse back and come into this. Okay. One quick question, just one quick question. I think I didn't see, I think I found it, but I didn't see anything for benefits for, for the first month. Is, is that a quarterly um, expense? No, it's not a quarterly expense. It should be a monthly expense. Again, UHY was responsible for the January activity 
and we have limited access to the bank statements and everything. So February is going to be our cleanup month and correcting what was done in January. So I can only speak to what UHY did for January. Okay. Again, we we didn't we didn't prepare these numbers. I quickly went in today to see what what was going on, and I noted variances. Okay. Now there's Very other good. variances I've noted that, for example, when I'll speak to it when we get to the bank rec that you guys have two CDs that are not on your bank that are not in your trial balance. So there's going to be a lot of corrections that RBT is going to be making going forward. Um, to make sure that your financial records are in line with what's being presented. That's that's reasonable. Yeah. I, again, we're gonna we're we've already started the process of um, communicating with your payroll provider to get journal entries automatic from them directly to QuickBooks Online. It should have been an automatic thing, and it wasn't. There's very manual entries that are going on, so this shouldn't be a problem for February's data because we're already in in the process of making those changes right now so that your information is cohesive all the way through okay so like i said we're going to hold off on page number nine but another topic besides what Noel brought up about benefits i'd like to also have uh, an explanation on utilities of eleven thousand five ten out of a fifty two thousand dollar budget that would definitely take up one fifth of our budget in the first month yeah, so the ver that's the version that you're looking at. It was coded incorrectly. It should be rent. That eleven thousand five ten should be rent. Your utilities were two thousand two sixty two. That was one of the errors that I found. All right. So let's hold off on nine. Let's go over to ten, which talks about our investments and our accounts. Sounds like we may have some discrepancies on that side as well but let's why don't you present 10 next and then we'll try to keep on working forward see if there's anything in these financials that we could potentially uh, approve um, as they're you know as they're presented and if once we can't we'll go back and either do later or we'll have to do it another time so page okay. 10 on that ones please so if you can see the screen share um here's a snapshot of the bank accounts and the cds and the money markets so listed you'll see a one thousand dollar or a one million dollar cd and then there's two hundred and fifty thousand dollar cds with orange bank and trusts so with that i'm going to presume the version that you have if you have it printed out is also incorrect because the formulas were not correct so you're probably showing one million dollars of certificates of deposits and treasuries and it's actually the 1.5 because it includes the 1 million and the two separate 250s. Correct. So Our you're talking line item does not have any bank uh, specific uh, maturity dates or purchase dates or anything or rate, even though nope. we know we've already, we already made those decisions on that. Correct. Though? Right. I, I don't have that data. That's something else that I'm working to get access to. Yeah, that was previously voted upon so that we should be able to provide you that um so that okay. the act yep so the bank accounts right so in the banks you have a total of 10 million 313 950 showing as as what's what's on your books actually this isn't your bank balance this is your book balance so this factors in any cash that's gone out or deposits that have come in that may not have been reflected in your bank statements. So at the end of January, that was your balance. Now, I didn't have access to all of the bank accounts, but I had talked last month about including what you're earning month to date, and then I'm going to include year to date on each of the accounts that I do have access to. So um, for January, you earned $260 on the accounts that I do have access to that amount should actually be much higher because of the other accounts that I don't have access to. Okay. Once again, so page 10, we're not gonna be able to approve either. So that's rectified. Let's go to page 11 and start talking about bills um, that are looking to be dated. Hopefully we'll be able to reconcile and move forward with that so we can allow for uh, approval of some, if not most of these, um, depending upon their actors. So let's move forward on page 11 the reoccurring uh, building services uh, vendor payment approval 
plus. Do you do that, Bill, or does she do it? I do. Um, I would like, if we could, Mr. Chairman, sure. uh, Shannon, to, to discuss one other topic. Uh, I'll touch on audits and payables. And uh, Bill.com is a discussion I wanted, Shannon, just to give you kind of an overview of something we're looking at. We do recommend a, a move we make. So if I could, before she finished her report on IBA, I'd like to talk about Bill.com. That's okay. Okay, so we're going to stop audit reports, come back to it. Yes. We're going to talk about audit update or not? Yes, but I'll do that. We'll let Shannon finish her part, which is Bill.com, okay. and then she's done for IDA, and okay. then I'll talk about audit, audit, and tables, if that's okay. okay. Yeah. Shannon, can we address Bill.com, please, when you're ready? What is it? What does it mean? All right. Sure. So bill.com is a service that you could sign up for that you will handle all your payments to your vendors electronically and it integrates with QuickBooks and you will no longer have to do manual checks. So you won't have to, to spend the time waiting for checks to be signed twice a month. Um, I know it was previously done once a month and you could approve things electronically at your leisure. It offers an app. You can set up multiple layers of um, of uh, approval. So you can have as many approvals on it before an item actually gets paid and you won't have to wait for the board meetings to do this. So your vendors are getting paid more timely. You're cutting down on cost of manpower and checks and postage. Um, it's a minimal fee depending on how many users you do add to it and the cost per transaction is less than a check. Um, but it will give you it will give you the oversight of all of the payments being made and reduce the, the time waiting to pay them because of having to sign everything manually. Absolutely, and, and I just wanna clarify that when Shannon says that you know we'll have the opportunity to review and approve, it's not just staff, board members will as well, our signatories and such, so you'll be able to, at your leisure, be able to look at, at these, review them, ask us questions and approve them through this system. Much more streamlined. We've had a problem, at least since the year that I've been involved here, of paying our bills on time, just time ease and adding up it just not lining up, I should say, and this really would help us with a lot of those, both on, on receivables and payables. So a question that I would have on that, normally what we do is the bills are presented to us with backup material. That backup material is then talked about, and then we vote upon them. And if we have ones that we don't want to pay, we leave them off the side. We usually do that on a monthly basis. Right. So um, I don't think so we have, I don't know. Well, all of that support would be scanned in with each payment that goes to you for review and approval, and it would be at your discretion to not approve a bill right in You'll right see. within the application. So the problem is, though, is that we want the, all the bills to be reviewed by everyone on the board. It's not just the authorized signer who can approve a bill. The bills are approved individually by everybody. Can we require every member to... to Approved, Shannon? Yeah, absolutely. So how would this work? Yeah, so I, I, so I, was, I went one more question, like I said. So, so then you know, like some sort of invoice or whatever, you, you would see everyone would receive some sort of email or whatever, you have to download the app, so it'd be app like- You could do it on your phone, you can do it. I think you could do it through the web as well. You don't necessarily have to have the app on your desktop computer. You can do it you know, through the web, but you can even do it on your phone. You're able to log in. So it'll tell you when you have to do there's something up for your approval. It's cute for you, and you can go in and you'll be able to look at all this detail. And then you would check off, you approve or, or disapprove or whatever. Yeah, I think it was a and then, and then who actually? I'm sorry. I'm no, no, please, please. Then, 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 then who, who actually says okay? They they collected all these approvals and then actually says, "Hey, the bill." That would be someone in the office. Yeah, so final? that's based on your setup. If you want every member of the of the board to to approve a bill, it will not get paid until it has all of those approvals. But then, excuse me, Shannon. So you're telling me once everyone signs, says approved, 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 it automatically goes. Right. Yes, but you can schedule for a future date. So it's not. There's multiple ways to do this. So if you wanted it set up to do mid month and end of month or you know specific days, you can set the bill up to go for the approval. And once everybody's approved, it still will not get issued until that that specific date that's been set up. Shannon, um, Mr. Chairman, I just have a question. Shannon, with the QuickBooks, mm -hmm. uh, does it have the, can, uh, can we do a listing first, like the bills available? Absolutely, because, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the payable module wasn't previously being utilized within QBO. Um, that is something that we have changed with our first check run. So there is a listing of checks that can go to, to all the board members. 
that they can see, but you'd also see the same listing in bill.com as well. Okay, so um, so b before going into the details, that's what I was thinking of. And yep. okay, so is does QuickBooks have um, approvals, but the last link is after approval, somebody then has to sign. Is that one of the capabilities? No, no, it's all electronic signatures. So there is oh. no, this isn't done through QuickBooks. This is this, the approvals oh. would be done through bill.com. Once everything is approved, the, through bill.com, then there would be um, a process to sync that data with your QuickBooks and it would automatically bring the data over with your GL accounts already coded to it. Okay, I'm good. So so um, bills.com is the lead then before we yes. get to QuickBooks. That's it. Well, it, it, it doesn't have to be. The bills can be set up within QuickBooks and then pushed over to bill.com, but for reducing the duplication of work that's currently going on, I would highly recommend that everything, everything be set up in bill.com and then push to QuickBooks. No, I like that. So um, I think what I was thinking of in QuickBooks, the bills are there, mm -hmm. then we could do a view in QuickBooks, check off there, and then it goes over to bills.com. Instead of authorization everywhere in bills.com, where I could be out of town for a month. What I would recommend is that um, that the board at their leisure do demos of bill.com to understand what it's like. Okay, very good. For me right now, I mean, and again, if, if we're all gonna, which I, we all, I agree, Mike, that we all see the invoices and approve them, but we don't have to have it currently right now. Let's, let's take little baby steps, like maybe we'll do bill.com at a later date, but you could always send an email out and tell everybody, listen, you approve, disapprove, or receive an email and then write the check. And then we have, for right now, that's why I would like, if, if, if it's a timing thing, you yeah. can see it, approve it. You don't have to put it through bill.com right now, at least for me anyway. That's kind of it. Uh, and then I'd like to go to council. Yes, I think I will echo what I did just said, take it a step at a time, you know. I mean, it's almost like, I mean, meeting here to look at bills and, I mean, bills and so on gives us that i mean that closeness because we are looking at everything um but if we have to go that way uh let's take it gradually at this yeah. point should we have a comment um I, just a suggestion um what some ideas used to do is have this kind of information go through their finance committee so if you have a few members who are on your finance committee they could bill could work with them and send them the backup and the request for bills to be the, the checks to be cut and then each of those committee members only need to sign off and the bills will get paid and then the committee can provide a report at, to the full board every month uh, the full just, board has to approve all the bills now if you can you can you can give the authority to your finance committee to do that if that is something that i'm just saying you or, can or, i'm or, not saying i'm not making it or, or, or would it be if you know, something in between again, that maybe the everyday items, rents, you know, telephones, those things are, however, anything else above we got, then would go to something, something in those. Something Which like makes that. a lot of sense because you know your recurring bills. I mean, they're pretty standard. Your utility may go up and down a little bit, but your rents are basically the same. You know, those recurring things should be streamlined because it just makes sense. And then the other ones, yeah. So you maybe could say unless there's some sort of crazy delta on a utility bill or something, then it would go through that. And if it if it does change that dramatically, then we'd have to go through the full board. Mr. Chairman. Well, I think we're in a, uh, a discussion that probably is going to take a little bit longer than being at a regular meeting because when we first decided this, uh, the entire board voted on that all bills will come to the board and all bills will be reviewed and all bills at the board meeting will be either approved, denied, or somewhere in court. We instituted a batching process for reoccurring, for contract, and for monthly, and for the other, all other encompassing stuff. Uh, we did that for full transparency. Um, I don't see how this continues to be full transparency if we're gonna have committees do it and someone else can do it, and then it's not gonna come. I'm not comfortable with that, so I will table this item, um, uh, and I will request that if they, committee of board members wants to get together and, and come up with a, a, a recommendation to be voted upon by the whole board 
then we can sort of do that and either uh, you can we can do it we can call a committee meeting between now and the next meeting uh, or we can use it as a topic for the uh, February meeting as well um, I'm sorry for the March meeting um, but at this point we're going to continue to move forward with the way that we've been doing it for the past year which is batched individually voting upon it by batch um, until uh, we can come up with a solution that would be acceptable to the entire board and be voted on by the entire board. So um, I think we'll table that at this point. Okay. okay. Shana, thank you. We'll come back to you for OCFC. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, I yes. have a question yeah. because I'm not familiar with the correct procedure. But is it the case where even once they're approved at a full committee meeting, there is a lag in getting checks signed? Because you could use bill.com as an automatic bill payer once they're approved at the monthly meeting, if that helps you. I, I don't know the process enough to know. Uh, that's been, that has been a problem, not always every month, but it has been a problem. Tommy of signatures and, and such. If, if I may, please. Um, my comment would be is that it's not so much using bill.com to pay it, it's the coding of the bills that's going to cross check into your QuickBooks where. If it's not coded correctly and you pull up the QuickBooks pages, it's going to be lost. So my concern would be who's going to be doing the coding? What's the turnaround time? And what's the budget to have that set up? Shannon. So we would be reviewing the coding that is that is part of our responsibilities to make sure that things are coded properly. We're we're making sure that that integration is happening, and the cost is minimal. There is no real setup cost. It's it's just setting up the vendors when it comes through, but as you scan documents in, it automatically reads it and, and it will start to populate and then you will make the changes if any are needed. Prior to it even going for approval from the board within that system. So RBT would be reviewing it before it even went, making sure that coding was proper. Or if table doesn't go to a committee, a committee will have to take that up and make a recommendation to the full board. Um, at this point, we're on page 11 on the reoccurring building services. If you'd like to go through that and see if we can get something approved tonight. Yes, that would be great. Okay, I'm going to start with the first set here, recurring building services, as you said. Uh, Orange and Rockland is first. That's our utilities for the Warwick location. A little bit higher than normal because we're in the dead of winter. Recoverable? Um, yes, correct. Recoverable from the day. Yes, and we have billed them for uh, their share, our tenants for their share of the cams uh, in 2021, actually. So just, some of the stuff I brought up in past meetings, but I'm going to reiterate it again so please. some of the new members can understand some of the stuff that we've already discussed that knows you probably. <laughs> yes, well, I should clarify yeah. more specifically. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, our uh, leases with our subtenants at the Warwick Accelerator, we have three clients there. In their leases, we do specifically say that uh, they are responsible for their share of the common area maintenance uh, expenses, uh, utilities as well. So we had not yet billed that, and we did last uh, last month. We billed uh, each of the three subtenants for those those uh, their share of the bills. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, Time Warner Cable. That's internet for both uh, 334 Avenue of Americas. Where there are changes that are afoot there too. Uh, one building we still are responsible for the laser building, which we call the bottling building. There, the laser cutter is in there. Uh, we're providing internet access still there, but one of the accounts that we're paying for here under this amount has been switched to our subtenant. We've been doing that with the subtenants now, asking them to take over responsibility for their internet service. So, uh, Sackle Silkscreen will be taking over one of these bills. The other will remain for the rest of until we're out of that space. Central Hudson Gas and Electric. There's an error there. It's not for for Crotty Lane. That's for 334 Avenue of the Americas. The accelerators there as well. Gas and Electric for those locations. Recoverable or not? Uh, no, not with our leases with them. Uh, let's see. Uh, next is Xerox. That's our copier lease. 303. Uh, Lamella Sanitation. That's trash and trash recycling. That's also mislabeled. That's 334 Avenue of the Americas. Um, the next couple uh, B4 holdings in town of New Windsor, these are examples where we're no longer paying rent for these locations, but any rent we receive from subtenants, we're remitting directly to our former landlord. Uh, B4 holdings are 603 and 605 Broadway and Newburgh, a uh, fashion manufacturing accelerator. And we've told that that landlord that we're no longer paying the rent we consider uh, because of the 
per the comptroller's report, we consider uh, those leases uh, invalid because they were entered into fraudulently. Um, so that is new. Same thing for New Windsor. Well, New Windsor, we our leases expired there. Some of the tenants are still in place. The town is still trying to work with them. Um, so uh, any rents we're receiving from those sub tenants, we're passing on to New Windsor. Next is uh, First Columbia. That's just our share of utilities for Fort Crowdy Lane and our share of cam, our share of cam and rent. Uh, also to our landlord, First Columbia. Again, that's the headquarters of Crowdy Lane. Uh, next is Internet in Warwick. That is recoverable, $90.71. Um, 88 Studio, that's our usual payment uh, to uh, Dennis and Dean Brady. We provide not brand management any longer, but it's AV and tech support, what they're doing. Uh, MidHudsonNews.com, that's our, our monthly uh, bill for our advertisement that we have at MidHudsonNews.com. Uh, next is Cleaning for the uh, Crotty Lane location, again, the headquarters. Casey Cleaning. Focus Media, Focus Media, we did complete our contract with them. Um, we were paying them a retainer for PR and, and uh, uh, copywriting. We're no longer doing that, but they do, uh, we do pay for an email sign up widget, I'll call it, on our website, pops up and encourages people to, to sign up for our, our, our email list. We really don't need that right now, so we're canceling that. So that bill will be gone shortly. Uh, let's see, so that's uh, Frontier. Uh, now you're seeing uh, wireless uh, data, Ethernet, and the Internet. We have, this is, we the contract for this just expired. I've been warning the board about this. So we did uh, have a meeting with uh, Frontier, and we have authorized the downscaling that uh, that Internet service down to basically uh, DSL uh, at, at uh, less than $100 a month, which is just a direct Internet connection not with the same kind of bandwidth. Um, so you'll see that coming down. Uh, that price will come down dramatically. Uh, facilities maintenance, that is uh, cleaning from Middletown. I just went up $25. That's something that we need to re-procure again. Card member service, we have two credit cards. Uh, the first card member service ending in uh, 7392. That's uh, really mostly our GoDaddy for our uh, web hosting for our website. Uh, I'm skipping trash and recycle, going to the other credit card payment. You see that does list uh, usual expenses. You see office supplies, marketing, PR website membership, uh, info tech. Uh, so a number of different items there. Uh, trash and recycle is going back up to Merengue. That's for our middle, Middletown site, sanitation in the Middletown Accelerator. Going back down now, national business leasing. That's the copy of the Kiosera copy we're releasing in Middletown. Uh, water and sewer, this is another bill. I know you just paid one, but we had held off on paying it, so it seems like it's coming quickly again, but this is just for the next water and sewer bill. Yes, recoverable. That is everything under recurring building services. Okay, that total is 25955 Any questions, discussions, anything that anyone needs to uh, any further I have a couple of questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sure. Observations, no. rather. Okay. Um, the what I noticed, and I'm not sure, there are a lot of items on the invoices saying blank, or like B4 holdings doesn't have a, an account number or invoice number. So is there some reason for that? That's just an observation. There are a couple of them on there like Altiva that has blank, credit card payment processing at the bottom also as blank. So that's just an observation. Just for consistency, if we could have numbers there since we're being that detailed. I, I believe for many of these, you'll see that there's some sort of invoice, a uh, voucher that's behind the check itself, but there's no associated account number with it. So I think that's the case, for example, with B4 Holdings, our old landlords in town of New Windsor. Uh, we don't have a, an invoice from them or, or uh, you know, any PO or something we're referencing. Um, and I think it's where there's no account numbers where you're seeing it blank. Okay. But, uh, but I don't know why, like credit card, for example, that isn't. So I'll, I'll verify that. Yeah, that's just an um, observation. Um, you mentioned Central Hudson, that I think for Quacky Lane, that was another entity's bill. I think it was 934.14. It's like the third from the top. Okay. 
Orange and Rockland, Time Warner, and Central Hudson. You said the lease said we couldn't recover that amount. So is that in concrete on the lease? Because I'm thinking of it, say it's recurring every month. How can we stop that? So in this instance, no, what we have is we have inherited a bunch of accelerator locations, many of which the former board uh, um, entered into. Um, in those instances, uh, council, both at the county level, state level, and at our local level, has deemed that those all those accelerator leases are now void. Uh, what we have done is started to get out of the accelerator business. Right. And we've eliminated our accelerators existingly. Uh, we are in the process of getting out of the New Windsor leases, and we have some of that in holdover status. The ones that you're asking about, numbers 334, is the address of one of the three or four accelerator buildings that are in New Windsor by Crotty Road. So we have an inherited agreement that's totally void, but we continue to reoccur uh, costs on that. The, no, the, uh, the, one the, I was the one I was referring to was 1752 on the invoice. Okay, that's where I heard it was, it was, we couldn't get out of the lease there. So I think my follow-up then, um, will this be like, this just for this month or it will go on like for a year? No, this has been going on for five years. So we have another four years on it? No, no, no. This has been going on for the past five years. Okay, all right. Since okay. Trying to get out of those leases and have those tenants directly leased from the town of New Windsor. And we are waiting for them to consummate a deal with the town of New Windsor. Okay, Once that happens, those leases. La last one. Uh, do we have tax ID numbers for all these vendors? Uh, I believe we do, but I can verify that. Okay, because we, we, if they're over $600 for the year, they should be getting 1099s. So that's why I'm asking that. Wouldn't that be part of our service that we have? Yeah. Shannon, do you have any comments on that? So yes, you should, anybody that receives over $600 of compensation, um, but that should have been part of your year end work with UHY as it was part of their agreement. Good point. Is that threshold 600? 600, yeah. Yeah. It is a setting that you can set up within QuickBooks. I do not know if they set that up properly, but that is something that we could look into. Okay. Noel, any other, any other questions, Noel? No, those are the, those are the ones I had <laughs> on that page, yeah. on that page. Gonna, <laughs> with that, I entertain a motion. Um, on the uh, reassuring building services, pages 11 and into 12, 25,955.21. I so move. No, Spencer. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Carried unanimously with six. On page 13, Bill, go ahead. Page 13 are just uh, our monthly contracted bills. Uh, Loki Brill uh, Consulting, that's the usual. For those that don't know, that's uh, this is our current local labor uh, monitoring service, making sure that our projects that, that uh, sign our local labor policy, that the, uh, attesting that they will comply with it. Uh, this is the company that goes out on site and, and checks driver licenses and such to, to make sure they are complying. Uh, these are inflows and outflows that uh, we uh, we charge the clients and then uh, put them into an escrow account, and then we pay the Loki bill firm, the local labor auditing firm, uh, as as their visits uh, come due here. Uh, so that's uh, all for them. Busque Holstein, this is our, our first real bill from our general counsel. Uh, she's earned every penny of that, I can tell you, because we're on the phone constantly. Uh, and then ITC, this is, I alluded to this earlier, after ITC, the uh, uh, telecom data company, uh, basically rebuilt our data network from scratch. Uh, we are uh, doing a monthly 
and monitoring uh, arrangement with them where they're, they're really uh, off-site off monitoring of our network and, and being able to support us in that regard. One question I have here, um, with your guy with the uh, folks quit hosting, are we separately coding their regular work for us compared to the litigation? <laughs> <And those services. laughs> Thank you. Sorry, you weren't asking me. But so we can yeah. keep, so we can keep that in a separate. I say separate. Yeah, we can keep a ledger of that so we know. I believe uh, for the board members, we've uh, uh, authorized full split, full speed, which Sue represents. Um, she has a uh, a partner that is helping us with some potential litigation. Our initial board authorization was twenty thousand dollars. Uh, I could not exceed twenty thousand dollars. Uh, to begin that type of stuff and then come back to us if we need more. We may be going into executive session later to talk about that. Any questions in regards from the board in relation to our monthly contracts? With that, I will entertain a motion. Motion. Thank you, Dean. Second, Dr. Yes. Rodak. Further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Carried unanimously to six. Bill, page 14. Okay. The all other category. All other. <laughs> uh, the first is the Orange County Youth Bureau. This is uh, an agency that we had an agent relationship with. Uh, they had a signed agreement with us to provide um, workforce development uh, services essentially for youth. Uh, they did submit a voucher uh, that I have here. Uh, I have the detail for I have it there it is. Uh, where uh, they performed a number of different services, uh, volunteer and work readiness for, for, uh, for uh, youth, uh, coordination of programming, training, workshops, presentations, one-on-one -on -one assistance, job coaching, uh, workforce preparation, uh, and such, uh, coordination of emergency responder, volunteer recruitment and outreach, Creation of resources, uh, packets for schools, local fire, ambulance departments, et cetera, and supplies for youth for volunteer career fairs and workshops. Uh, they had uh, an, an agreement, a, a signed allocation from uh, the OCIDA for $23,000, and, and this is a voucher they put in for work performed uh, for $10,000 against that $23,000. That's that. Uh, Second, uh, uh, oh, and professional fees here for Orange County Attorney's Office. That's for attorney, county attorney Donna Badura and the work that she's done really for our leases for the Middletown uh, Accelerator. Uh, that's the work that we agreed with, with Ms. Katzoff. We'll keep separate and we'll utilize the county attorney's office for that uh, because there's a lot of real estate expertise and experience there that Donna has and she's excellent to work with. And, so is quite comfortable with that arrangement. And the last is uh, the cost of advertising for uh, to provide notice for a public hearing for the Walgreens uh, project uh, with the Times Herald record, one hundred and six dollars. Those are the three charges this morning. Sure. Uh, what I would ask is, uh, whenever we're doing the notice of public hearing, we just put the project, whether it's a code name, whether it's the actual name, so we know which one it's for in the future. Um, I'd like to ask council. Um, opinion in regards to using the IDA for paying um, the $10,000 for, I'll say a, um, what's the correct term, Bill, that we call these people that are agents of the Orange yes. County IDA? Um, this is something that is uh, um, kind of inherited from the previous board. And we, um, I'm not comfortable with it, but I understand that it's something that was previously approved or at least talked about or entered into. So I wanted to get your opinion. Well, I, I, just to jump because I, I, I was going to ask the same similar question because, in other words, if, when did all this happen or whatever? I, I get it. We had it. We had this from previous to come, you know, to come forward before we take a look at it. But for timing and everything, I mean, we've been talking about jobs, maybe Walgreens, where maybe hold up these services and, and have them talk with them somehow or whatever, as opposed to. You know, they're doing it whenever they want, when they want, and for what, for, I don't know. For purpose. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the workforce development, um, do we have, because we have a list of accomplishments. You have a way of verification that all those accomplishments were 
I mean, anyway, we verify them, just write a check for them. But I do have a full packet of, of all their accounting of all the work they did that, that uh, meets the $10,000 invoice. Has that been given to the board yet? I, I haven't shared that detail. Certainly can. So I think what we should do is um, we should hold off on the 10000 so we can all take a look at the information um, and make sure that it's verifiable. I'd also like the council to take a look at it. If this is the right place to be doing this type of stuff. I know that this is how it was done in the past, but if we decide to move forward and do this in the future with quote unquote agents of the IDA, is it better through here or is it maybe better through Capital Funding Corporation? Like what's the, what's the governance on that? What's the best way to do that? Because, um, and I also would like to, um, from staff, understand if these agents are, you know, if they're looking to do work for us or do work on behalf of the IDA, is it right in line with our mission? I think that's what Dean and I, when I think we spoke about, we spoke about before, is are they doing, are they creating jobs? Are they helping create jobs, tax rateables, commercial development, things that IDAs are meant for? Or is this just to help them with their, um, you know, with their mission? And uh, I think one of the things we've asked in the past uh, especially on ones that are less county focused and more regional focused. Is there anybody else putting money in for that so we can have a better understanding of it? Is there other IDAs putting stuff in or tourism agencies or counties as a whole? So we have a better understanding of that. So I'd like to um, I'd like to hold off on the 10,000 until we can get more concrete information and discuss it, uh, you know, get it from the staff, look at it. So in this instance, uh, I would like to hold off on that until next month but look at the other two bills totaling, what would that be, 642.61. That's easy math. And that's not, <laughs> I can do that one. That's real easy math. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, uh, to push forward uh, uh, a, uh, a request to approve those. I'd like to get a motion on that if that's possible. I move the motion, okay. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, No, Dean, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, carry six. Hold on the Mr. Chairman, before you go forward, um, yes. with that item for the 10,000, are we putting that on hold for two months or just one? Because since we didn't get the paperwork on it, um, do we want, if we, if we find issues, do we want CFOS to satisfy those issues before we bring it to a vote next month? Yeah, so what I, I don't know if you heard, we asked for staff to provide us with backup material and a narrative. Okay. And then we'll, if it's acceptable, we'll bring it to the next month's, as part of the next month's batch. If it's not acceptable, we'll push it to the following month. Uh, okay. Until it's okay. acceptable, are we comfortable with voting on it? And, and I'll work with the staff to get the background. Get the background. The background. Yeah. But what I... What I, I will say to you is it's not uncommon for IDAs as part of their economic development mission to work with an established organization that's doing job training to help facilitate that. I, I don't have enough information about this to give you an opinion. Thank you. I'll, I'll share all the back yeah, of course with Sue as well. well. And if there's any yeah, previous yeah. like resolutions or contracts or those type of things where potentially previous boards have um, have signed up for yes. and or committed to and or there's any minutes if it's not official maybe it's in a minute or something like that yeah i do have just just we'll move off this in a second here but included in this packet behind the voucher uh is a signed letter from the iba january 23rd 2021 where they're authorizing the allocation of twenty three thousand dollars for the year so that is here if i can find other, get all the other back there yeah, please include it with the packet we share great okay that leads us the chairman mr chairman sorry sir one more thing um i am embarrassed but I can, I don't know which one of the two females are in the group since I, I heard the roll call, but I wasn't sure who is Susan. Oh, uh, both are Susan, so maybe can I? Well, sir, board member Susan Walski will raise her hand. And then Susan Katzoff is our general counsel. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I okay. to differentiate between the Susans. I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so. don't end up Susie. I'm okay yeah. with that. No Susie. No Susie. Suits all the same thing. I'll call you cat. Yeah. Cat's off. Yeah. Don't do that. Or attorney. <laughs> Whatever. Counsel. Okay. Um, 
think last on the finances and audit update. Yes, just the audit because I'm not going to take too much time here. We've done a lot in finance. Audit is ongoing, uh, a near completion, frankly. JDS has done a lot of work. We sent out confirmation letters to all of our projects where they have information they have to verify for us. They're all coming back. And we've gotten 20 plus confirmation letters so far. So moving along, uh, they've also, JDS has gotten to the point where they've collected enough information. They've asked staff uh, and our consultants for uh, further details and clarifying. So we're in the middle of responding to a long list of questions that they have, but that continues to move on move, move pretty quickly. So JGS being that's a local CPA firm, I think a lot of people know them. Um, we've retained them in the past and they've done this audit. This audit is part of our Paris reporting to the to New York State. Correct, Correct. absolutely. To the authorities budget office, we have uh, reporting that uh, ensures our transparency about all our projects, all our doings and such. So Paris reporting is it's onerous, but it's an important uh, component of what we do. Uh, and yeah, this helps prepare us for this. And JGS, uh, formerly known as Jettleson, Giordano and Siegel, they've been doing our audit for, I believe, well over 12 years. Uh, so that is something that we've, we've certainly uh, so told them and, and the way we approach all services. We'll be looking to re-procure that after this audit. Just timing didn't allow it with this. They needed to get started. Uh, and we just brought in a new CPA, obviously. Uh, but it is something they understand that we'll re-procure after this year. Great. And I want to thank Sheena. We, she can't stay on with us for OCFC. I'll give the financials for OCFC. Next month, she'll be doing uh, uh, both uh, for both agencies going forward. Great. And Thanks. we talk about timing of that so it's easier. Correct. Okay. Anything else on finance? Though? That's it, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on finance from board members? Like we move on to the agenda. All right, Chairman's report. Mine will be pretty quick. Um, one, welcome and thank you for joining the board for all the new board members. Um, I have not had a chance to meet all of you yet. Uh, what we're looking to do, um, since uh, some of you may have some direct knowledge of IDA uh, uh, programs and such, uh, we've asked uh, council um, and staff to potentially put together a webinar that will all go on at a convenient time where we'll just um, really go over the nuts and bolts of what the enabling legislation talks about, really like an education seminar. We'll talk about everything in regards to what the actual programs that we have, um, as well as the commitments that we have to do in relation to conflicts of interest or anything else like that, like a whole, I'll say, Chichi on uh, you know economic development 101, but more than just that, put the idea in what we're going to expect, and we'll add some flavor to it. We'll add, um, you know, we're going to potentially uh, be formating, be formulating committees or reconstituting them. So we'll see what everybody's interests are, those type of things. I'd like to call it a retreat, but it's really not. It's really just going to be, I think, everyone just jumping on a call. I think it'd be easier that way, um, and then we'll try to do that before the next meeting. So. We'll ask staff to go along and try to match up everybody's schedule. I'd like to keep it to less than two hours, please. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, you know, if we can uh, do that uh, between now and the next uh, uh, board meeting, that would be great. Um, additionally, um, we have a lot of things that we're going to be going into in the remainder of the agenda. And I want everybody to feel comfortable with that. Okay, and not knowing how every uh, if everybody's experience or knowledge about IDAs. If you have a question or if you don't feel comfortable, please let us know. You don't need, you know, uh, we need to be able to move forward if we so deem on a lot of these things that we're going to vote upon with four, with at least a majority. The majority of seven would be four. We have six board members present. If you don't feel comfortable, please just let us know. Uh, we'll like we'd like to make you feel more comfortable. Um, and have you understand it better so you know what you're voting upon. But if you can't vote on it, just let us know and it's not going to be held against you or anything like that. You know, this is a learning curve and uh, we're coming at you, you know, full bore as fast as we can. Um, and I think as you see these, you'll start to understand a lot of the terminology that we're using. And we'll try to ask staff, myself and consultant staff to, to um, really tell you about exactly what we're trying to do. There's a, a bunch of potential uh, projects that we'll be talking about. A lot of them are, uh, I'll say the basic kind of projects. So it's not nothing that uh, we haven't seen uh, in the past as an IDA, but I will say in two test, we've seen some very weird stuff in the last year that not normally we would actually have in front of us. Tonight, I don't think we have any of that. So that's good. So I think while we have a full agenda, it's not a, I'll say a crazy agenda. Um, and lastly, um, uh, like I did uh, with anyone uh, else, if anyone would like to have uh, a discussion with me in particular about 
what your strengths or weaknesses are, what your roles could potentially be, if there's anything you want to pick my brain on um, in regards to IVAs and economic development. I've been in uh, economic development for now over 20 years. I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I've seen uh, a lot of different things. I've been on the economic development agency front, on the state level, and now at the and now helping uh, run this organization. Um, we did during the transition. We went through a lot of procurements, including procuring and hiring Bill. Um, so uh, I have some industrial knowledge, some industry knowledge, um, but um, I'm not the be all end all. I'm not going to profess to be. Uh, I would hope that uh, if you feel if you feel comfortable coming with me, with any questions or concerns that you have, uh, please let me know. We'll try to add that to future agendas or maybe even to the upcoming webinar and training. Um, lastly, there's a lot of paperwork that all the new members need to do. Um, I'm not going to profess to know it all, but I know at a minimum you have to contact the county clerk and sign your attestation, put your hand up in place that you're going to be the best person in the world. Uh, you have uh, different trainings and different disclosures, and both at our level and the state level, there's a ton of it. I could ask you to work with staff directly on a lot of that stuff because they're going to be instrumental. There's also, I believe, a training seminar that the ABO puts on that you have to do. Yes. I've got all that info for you. I mean, speaking yeah. of board members, so there's that. all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then, really, lastly, on the chairman's report, um, historically, we've met in this room here in Goshen because it's been convenient for everybody throughout the county to meet in a centralized location. Um, we've uh, the previous board, the previous immediate board, committed to trying to do that so that we're at a general location here at the county. Um, we do have options of meeting elsewhere if we so deem. Uh, but what we have pledged, and I hope that everyone will take us up on that as well for the new board members, is full transparency. Uh, we're going to do full transparency on whatever we can, whenever we can, um, in regards to trying to earn the public's trust back in regards to this idea. Unfortunately, uh, we inherited a lot of uh, uh, issues. Those issues will be coming up and you'll be uh, distinctly uh, updated on some of them. We'll even probably be going into executive session today to talk about some of the stuff. That we're thinking about. So, with that, uh, that's the end of my report. Like I said, I'll share my contact info with everybody, and please feel free to reach out to me um, at any time if you have any questions, concerns, or any ideas that you want to move forward with. Yeah. So, with that, I'll turn it over to Bill for CEO. Very good. Uh, so, I'll uh, keep mine brief. Uh, just a few things. Uh, it was requested uh, more than once that uh, we uh, conduct a performance review for Kelly Riley, our project manager, the last person standing through all of this, this saga over the last year. She's been incredibly invaluable. Uh, I, if, I won't give details on the review uh, during executive session. If you want to ask me about that personal item, I can. Uh, I will certainly say that it was a very positive review uh, because Kelly was absolutely uh, you know, essential over the last year. And uh, I, I know I and the entire board uh, relied on her greatly. Uh, you know, with that said, I, I do want to just uh, comment that we, I feel like we have a full team coming together now. Obviously, the board is full now. We have seven members, four new ones, which is was exciting. Uh, Sue Katzoff and her team, we've really, I think, we're starting to gel between the staff and, and, uh, and her support team. Um, it may not feel like it in each board meeting, meeting but you will. <laughs> and in the next couple, I think you'll see, we'll continue to improve. Uh, RBT coming on was, was enormous as well. Uh, and then you'll see us again continue to re-procure some other components of our uh, you know, extended team, local labor audit, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I've also mentioned in recent meetings that we utilize a cost-benefit analysis tool for our projects. It's an important part of what we put out to the public, what we present during public hearings as we've done this week, the ones that we've had. Uh, the, the tool that we use for years, Inform Analytics, that company actually, uh, a couple of people left the company and the gentleman that was the principal just retired. Uh, so it's no longer available. I looked at three other options uh, and we selected MRB, their, their uh, cost benefit analysis tool, and we actually used it for uh, Walgreens for their, uh, that project to analyze that. And again, we posted the results uh, of that analysis on uh, our website under active projects under Walgreens. Uh, we did something similar for, for Southgate Flats Hotel. Uh, we had the public hearing today. Uh, so we'll be using that tool. We also will be scheduling a public hearing for Sativa. That's a, 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 a an application that you reviewed last month, and we've just uh, been, it's been very detailed, so a little more involved, and uh, we'll be scheduling that hearing probably for the second half of uh, of the week of uh, February 28th slash March 1st that week. It looks like we'll be scheduled then. Uh, also, we've been uh, continuing to get press. Uh, I've been uh, out there doing interviews and, and giving presentations to the chambers and rotaries and such. 
Uh, there was a nice feature piece in real estate in depth, a real estate oriented uh, um, publication that goes around uh, the uh, Mid Hudson. Uh, it was a, a, an article and in, in, an interview with me actually, which was uh, nice of them to do. And I want to thank Maureen Hallahan and the partnership for sharing that and really trying to share any positive news that we have to generate. We do appreciate that. Uh, and I will be presenting to NICECAR soon, uh, the New York State uh, Commercial Association of Realtors. Uh, that's just one of the modes and ways that we stay close with our local commercial real estate brokers. And, uh, and Maureen and I and some other members of our economic regional economic, county economic development team will be presenting to the Association of Towns soon also. Really just reminding all of them about what this, the, our various partners are here to do, uh, how they can be more uh, business attraction friendly and expansion friendly and a number of other items we're going to discuss, but that's something that we feel is overdue and we're looking forward to presenting together on that topic. Uh, that's it for me. Great. Any questions for Bill or staff? What was the, um, you said there was a, uh, today there was a hearing today? Yeah, so uh, we had a public hearing for uh, Walgreens on Monday uh, afternoon. There was a public hearing for Southgate Flats Hotel that we held in person. Uh, this afternoon, um, so it was uh, this uh, late this morning uh, in Highland Falls. Of course, that's the uh, hotel project that we've already incentivized. But you may recall, because their budget increased due to COVID, uh, they're looking for an increase in their sales tax exemption benefit and the mortgage reporting tax exemption. Because those benefits exceeded uh, $100,000, that triggered the need for an additional public hearing, which we held today. And that'll be an added item to the new business. Yes, it is. It wasn't actually. part of the agenda. Of it was an error. It was an error that it was excluded. Um, it was intended. We're going to be adding that to discuss. It. So with that, we might as well turn it in. You want to go right into that one? So yes. We... Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Southgate Flats. So um, again, this is a hotel project for Highland Falls, which is, if you ask me, badly needed there. Uh, the mayor uh, was at the uh, public hearing today, and he certainly was quite speaking at length as to uh, how the, frankly, called it a depressed village and it needs economic improvement, needs a real shot in the arm, and it's certainly a project that promises to do that. Um, we, um, we had the hearing today, very few comments. We had no written comments sent in advance. Uh, the mayor did ask a question, something similar to what uh, Mayor, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Supervisor Aquadio from the town of Newburgh asked in relation to Walgreens is, is there a way for the town or the municipality to be made up uh, for any sales tax they lose. Uh, and I have explained in both instances that it's not exactly the way it works, that sales tax is split basically evenly between the state and in this case, Orange County. And then Orange County, the county executive has the discretion to distribute those sales tax funds, keep them, frankly, or choose to distribute them amongst municipalities. County Executive Newhouse has distributed uh, those sales tax uh, disbursements, uh, disbursements for the past several years, and they usually tend to go to where the uh, greatest per capita, uh, you know, population is. So they do go heavily to our cities and such. So I want to say recently they just increased that by twelve million dollars because of the more sales tax that we uh, increased sales the more great things. Uh, the increased sales tax that we had in twenty twenty one. Yeah, sales tax has been over budget. Yeah, and you're right. They, 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 they distributed an additional that's amount that's as a result. Uh, but other than that, the, uh, it was uneventful, the public hearing, uh, some people just asking about the details and asking about timing and budget and such, uh, but that was held today in, in person. Bill, do you want to go, uh, we had this last meeting, so for the new board members, do you want to go over the quick history of that this was already approved? Yes. Right? And now this is just an, an added, because of the increased cost of construction, right. they need an increased limit or ceiling for the sales and use tax exemption right. totally. Right? Correct. Yeah, this project received a pilot. Uh, so the easiest pilot. that it gets. <laughs> yeah, really. So yeah, Southgate Flats Hotel, um, uh, it's now a $46 million project. It's grown tremendously. The budget really is, is uh, uh, just because of the cost of steel, uh, and, you know, uh, various uh, uh, supplies and such. Uh, the, the, uh, his budget has increased uh, dramatically as a result. Uh, one of the other benefits he received was the sales tax exemption. So saving the 8.125% sales tax on equipment, building materials, furniture, fixtures, et cetera, and such. Also, mortgage reporting tax. Uh, we, we would exempt the uh, the MRT on the principle of, of the mortgage that he have for this project. Uh, because of the increase of the, the project cost, the increase, therefore, of what he's going to be uh, actually borrowing uh, for a mortgage, 
um, and the additional expenses for that uh, he's looking for sales tax exemption for. All of that is increasing, so he's looking for greater benefit um, just because they correlate to the cost. Uh, and again, uh, because the increases in the benefits exceeded $100,000 uh, by statute, uh, it requires uh, an additional public hearing. So this is really just to, uh, we actually didn't hear any comments on the pilot that was already approved and, and uh, not, not uh, a current issue right now. Uh, we did have a couple of people asking questions about and comments, and I spoke with them afterward, but we limited uh, comments to the subject of MRT and sales tax. A question for council before I open up the board. Do we need to specifically say what those limits are when we're voting on it? We need to, yes, how much yes. additional. Um, what it's going to and what it's, or what it was and what it's going to. Just so we know the cap. The cap sure. for the sales tax is required for the state. Yeah. This, um, this matter is a matter that because it previously closed in Harris Beach representing you that Harris Beach is representing you with respect to the I don't have a copy of those motion machines, but I know that they submitted one. Um, and, and there is someone from right. Harris Beach on. Yeah, so Stephen Meyer is on. It's necessary to respond to this, but I'm handing out the right now. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe he can just tell us for the rest of what the current. Um, what amount you are approving as we look at. Stephen, are you still with us? Yep, I'm here. Sue, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Now, do you do you have information on this, Stephen? I, I know you prepare for CRBI on the OCFC, but uh, can you any, answer any questions on, on the Southgate Flats resolution? I, I do not have really any information. This actually predates my time at Harris Beach as well. I actually joined in 2019. So I really don't have a, a ton of information on this other than, you know, this is just simply, uh, you know, as the chairman indicated, just a simple request for an increase in certain financial assistance. So, yeah, so I think if you look at page number four, right, section three on page four. So it looks like we're going to be going, uh, if we decide to vote on this in the affirmative, going up to $1,445,663 in sales and use tax exempt benefit. And since then, it's going to in turn cause a larger mortgage to happen, a mortgage recording tax exemption not to exceed $205,592. Discussion, questions, board members, any questions, concerns, uh, ideas? Uh, is it, is it true? Just one question I have, just for my edification. Why, why do we like for, I think, Warwick? Why do we have three different pilots, if that's what you call it? Yeah, those are three separate projects. We'll get to them and we'll go over that. Okay. When we get to that. Okay. No problem. Okay. Yes. Do you have the original numbers that were approved for this resolution? I can, I can get them for you, yes. They're part of the public hearing, I believe. I believe that they were in the notice, yes. Just trying to establish where the differential came from. I realize cost of living expenses and everything, but gotta yeah. make sure the correlation holds mm -hmm. in line. It's, as you can imagine, uh, I think what their explanation was, not to put words in their mouth, but uh, obviously cost of construction. You know, the materials are going skyrocketing. Uh, bricks, mortar, you need like labor. Yeah. Yeah, everything's going up. This is not uncommon. We've already done this, I think, three other times in the last two years where we've increased the sales and use tax exemption to correlate yes. with it. Yes, um, but I think Sue will tell you it's happening with IDAs all the time. Yeah. yeah, and I just, do they have a projected start date for the project? Because I um, hate to see this have to come again before the board if they're still going to be 18 to 24 months out on this. Yeah, he's, he's looking to get started in the next six months. Actually, they're demolishing the old building they were going down today. They're to trying to get that down for a while. And they actually, we saw the being torn down today, which is a nice site that we can talk about for a while. And, for, the, those yeah, and, you ready. and for those that don't know, the, the projects that come in front of us, they have to still get approved at the local level through the planning board. We don't vote on them until that happens, correct? So this is something that, you know, well, that's a great question because you don't want to just incentivize something. I hope that it happens, but it won't happen without it. So it's, but that's more on the local level because they have to go through building permits. And in this case, a major demo, which well, is 
plus or less. And that's why I suspect some towns tend to move a little bit more rapidly than others. So uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a great well, way to put it. Really, they do approve. So in many ways, the benefit of the board is a catch-22, right? So developers have to know that they have your benefits approved from this agency, and then they have to go to their lenders, and the lenders won't approve until they see what the cap looks like. And then, you know, it's that kind of catch-22 situation. But your approvals um, give them a year, right? Like they have to start, they have to close with you. And I know you don't like that word. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. The buildings are, the, the company's not closing, they have to execute. They have to execute on the lease transactional document with the IBA in order to achieve and receive the benefits approved within one year of your approval. <laughs> so there is that, you know, stop yet. And it, it, within that year, they have not entered into the releases <laughs> with you. They have to come back and ask for an extension and they have to provide you with a, a basis for doing that. And many times there is a rational basis. I mean, I know you've heard it a thousand times, but COVID, like the most rational basis you can get, like everything came to a halt. And so it's not always COVID. There are other delays. Sometimes it's a matter of they didn't get tax credits they were looking for. They had to be bumped to the next cycle. So, um, but you do have that staff gap measure in your approval. Thank you. And I will, if I can answer Ms. Wolski's question, uh, the original sales tax uh, they requested was $1.392 million uh, in STE, and mortgage reporting tax was $204,750. Okay, so it's not that right. <laughs> uh, it's a very small amount, but it's, yeah, very small. And I, I should mention that we also uh, put public notice on for the public hearing and asked for uh, written comments back that we would have read today at the public hearing we received none of those. But there are, I think, uh, two public comments during the, the comments uh, hearings. And everyone's welcome to attend the public hearings and listen. Um, I don't think we should be uh, taking the public hearings during the meeting as board members, correct? It's more of a listening session for the public. No need. We, we are talking here at the actual board. All right, the board meeting. Right. So, any other further questions or concerns by the board? With that, I entertain a motion to uh, on the South Gate Flats project. Uh, should we read the resolution? No. Okay. No. Oh, the, the whole resolution. Yes. Do we have to? No. I know it's been done no. in the past, no. so I something I want to check. No. It, yeah. it should be a motion to approve the increase in the sales and use tax and the mortgage reporting tax as reflected in the resolution. Yeah, no, don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a move. Thank you, Dean. I get a second. I'll second. Oh, 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 She had oh, me oh, first. Oh. Sue. Yeah. Uh, you second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, in this case, we'll do a roll call. <laughs> don't have project. It's project. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Let's do it. That's fine. Mm. Okay. Uh, Michael Torelli. Yes. <laughs> Dean Tamburi. Yes. Vincent Odock. Yes. Robert Kennedy. Yes. Noel Spencer. Yes. Susan Walski. Yes. Uh, James Rinaldi is not here. Vincent Odock. Thank you. Six eyes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bill, if you want to go into the next one. Yes. Walgreens. Project. Next is Walgreens, otherwise known as Project Nucleus 14. Uh, we have representing uh, the, this project again, Mr. Steve McClure. I think Andy Hamilton is on as well. Uh, this gentleman has been chaperoning uh, Walgreens through this process. Uh, as I mentioned, we had a public hearing for this project on Monday. Uh, Monday at, I'm trying to remember, 2.30 p.m., I believe it was. Uh, that, too, we had no written comments provided in advance, uh, although we had public notice requesting that. Uh, and we had, um, I think, two, uh, two comments from Orange County Partnerships supporting uh, the project. And then we had uh, Supervisor Gilbert Quadio of the town of, New uh, of Newburgh uh, where he uh, was talking about, um, again, like Mayor D'Onofrio and Highland Falls, looking for a way for the town to be made whole. Uh, so I, my understanding is Walgreens has had some conversations with, with the town, uh, some dialogue about perhaps a community benefit agreement, something like that. Uh, but uh, we've also explained that uh, sales tax, as I mentioned before, it, it, it doesn't work specifically like that. And I have to comment that uh, the staff has analyzed this. We've done the cost benefit analysis. I think locally it showed an impact of uh, a, the cost, I'm sorry, the benefits to the local area economically are 35, 34 times the cost of, of that benefit. 
Um, sales, they're just looking for sales tax here. Frankly, they're going to create 200 jobs, pharmacy, pharmacy jobs, uh, pharmacist jobs, pharmacy tech jobs, plenty of other jobs. I think the sales tax that the town is going to lose will be made up in people shopping and spending, uh, buying lunch and such right there. So I think the town will be made whole. Uh, I do know, and I can speak personally because I was involved in the project heavily. Um, there was a mall project that was originally planned for, for this, this site. And it had challenges anyway, but COVID frankly put the final dagger in that project. The town did want, the town council wanted to see that project because frankly, they can, they, the way they look at it, they don't really have a downtown or a town center. They were hoping that this contemporary style mall, which looks to emulate uh, really the downtowns, would be that downtown for them and they were going to have a rec center there. They were disappointed the project failed, frankly. They weren't looking for a warehouse there. They told the developer Matrix, we're not going to support a pilot if you had it. Matrix did not ask for a pilot. Walgreens is just here looking for some support for the equipment they'll be they'll be installing there. And of course, uh, we are competing with Connecticut for this, so uh, that's I think the reason you're considering these. Great. Um, we did speak about this project uh, in the past. Um, it's been in front of us, and they made a presentation to us. Um, and this is exactly the type of project that I believe that Orange County should be going after, uh, and the type of uh, tenant. That is exactly who we want. Um, specifically, um, it's the project's determination on what type of incentives they think would make for their project to go over the hurdle and to be attractive. It's not for us to determine, you know, which you know, which in, which in buckets of these incentives that they want. In this instance, they're only looking for the sales and use tax exemption on this micro fulfillment set. Um, if you have looked at the details. This is a highly robotic and specialized um, equipment that would go into this brand new facility that would be built by a developer, a national developer who's building stuff on spec. And just in this instance, while or before they're building it, and actually they got the approvals um, from the town to build it, um, they have a tenant lined up and we're hoping to attract them. I think this is a uh, not only a home run, but a grand slam. If you look at some of their benefits, um, no, they actually had pharmacists working in this facility. Um, we, we all know we have a big pharmacy school up in Albany. We would hope that some of our kids that are local that are going through that five plus year school will be able to work in a facility like this. This is six figure jobs in relation to that. Um, in this instance, um, also, um, I think that uh, the benefits, the analysis is unbelievable. 34 to, to 1 ratio is unheard of. Um, and that's because of the highly specialized nature of what they're looking to do. Uh, with that, I'll be in full support of it, but I'd like to open it up uh, for any discussion amongst board members. Um, I'm looking at the the cost. Um, you look, I mean, percentage of local lead source material is zero. I mean, did we, have we added every cost? Because if you look at, in region construction, I mean, uh, if you look at the very first page there, you said zero, zero. Doctor, if I, if I don't mean to cut you off, but I want to explain that there, there's no construction, there's no build out associated with this. That's all being borne by the developer matrix. Uh, the uh, the applicant here, Walgreens in this case, is just looking for sales tax exemption on the high tech equipment that they'll be installing no. for picking, for sorting, and helping them to, to actually fulfill orders. So it's just on that. Uh, and there's no labor associated with it, really. Uh, the way they described it is uh, installation comes included with the equipment. So whoever the vendor is that's providing this equipment will be installing it. So there's really not a local labor component. But that's why you're not seeing some of the other line items in there, because it's just for this equipment that is covered. Thank you. If that clarifies. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. But is that also, been, um, we talked about, it, like, if, if it's available, I mean, if there is construction or to install this available, it would fall under the local policy, correct? The local labor policy is my question. When you say available, whether or not well, the labor is available? No, the, the manpower. Available, well, manpower available and or we talked about, you know, there's exemptions, right? Well, less the exemptions, obviously, right? That, yeah, that's what I meant by- We can ask the applicant for that, I think it's a fair question, uh, but the way they describe it, it, that it's specialized work related to this equipment and so it's it's the vendor would install it themselves i don't know if you want to comment on that or if you have a perspective um i guess what i would say is 
was that's the information you want to know because if it is um, equipment specific and so specialized that the installation of it is provided by the vendor who's selling it and they, it somehow will impact the warranty for instance if you don't have it installed by the vendor then obviously i assume that would be an exception under the, the policy if it is a vendor saying, well, we'll include it in the cost just because that's how we package our deal. It's not so specialized. I can hire, you know, my son to do it. Well, then, yeah, I want my son to live in the county, you know, and, and comply with your policy just for purposes of um, keeping as much of the benefit local as you can. So it, it's, that is the question. Like, is it because it is so specialized that it has to be by this team of people? And then that will be the question for all the projects coming forward. I mean, that's yeah. uh, if, if there's a if, if there's something in that realm that they can't, then they can't. But right. if there's local people that can, then they, they should should follow that. Right. And I think in this instance, it's really what they're telling us. I mean, this is not on the construction of the facility. This is not on the moving of dirt. This is not on um, the purchase of asphalt or concrete or bricks and mortar and stuff. This is highly. Uh, specific equipment that's to their pick and pack or their micro fulfillment. Um, I seem to say, from what I've read up on it, it's a lot of robotics and stuff and stuff like that that's proprietary to Walgreens as a whole and to their process. Um, I would love to see this happen um, in Orange County and not someplace else. Uh, that's not to say that they may, you know, we'd hate just to be just a warehouse that would distribute paper towels. You know, you don't need any robotics for that. This is highly, this is pharmaceuticals. And this has, you know, obviously uh, security um, and chain of command type stuff, because some of these could be narcotics or narcotics that are prescribed, um, those type of things. So I think that um, if we want to get a discussion on that, we can go into it. And if we need to ask the uh, tenant, I feel comfortable with it because I think they've already explained it, but I'll leave it up to the board to decide. If you want to have no, it. I have heard this question. If, they, if, if that's what it, it's deemed to be, then I mean, I, I agree with Mike. This is exactly the type of project. It's a great project. I think because of the the uh, employees that they're going to they're going to have there. Um, so, but again, that that's I do also know that there are local uh, people have worked on different types of uh, distribution uh, systems. Um, so, if it could be done, it could be done, and uh, they'll have to uh, iron that out. Like um, it's my understanding that these kind of warehouses, when it comes to pharmaceutical, and in full disclosure, my husband is a pharmacist, um, it's highly specialized robotics because it's not just physical movement. It has to have a computerized background for scanning the different products to be able to buy them. There's probably less than a dozen companies in North America that are that specialized with the software programming. It goes with those robotics. No, I, I understand, and I also understand. Obviously, they're loading, unloading, and we—I've I've seen local uh, people working on different uh, up in. Again, it's not pharmaceuticals, but also the scannings and whatever of right. all, all, all the uh, equipment, conveyors, etc. That right, the Amazon, which is highly automated as well, but they also have pickers for it. Correct. Correct, and, and that's being installed with local. So since this is a topic, I think we should continue to expand upon it. Um, do we want to talk about, is this going to be subject to the local labor policy or not, and have that part of our resolution? It, it is, I, I think believe, it is subject. Right. I think all your projects There's no not being. The question, and, and the, the applicant is aware of that and has acknowledged your local labor policy. So the question is, that will they apply policy. for an exemption? Exactly. That does not hold up the approvals that are okay. being sought tonight before the board. Um, in the event that there is a waiver of that policy that is required, it is incumbent upon the company to come to the agency and ask for that. Okay. So in, in, the, in the future. If yeah. we, it is. I mean, yeah, because they haven't, they haven't told us yet. Correct. And so the applies to the clients. Exactly. Either way. Correct. correct. That's correct. It always applies. There's either, there's either a, you know, an exception within your policy, so it's exempt, or they come and ask for a waiver. Okay. Uh, I have it. Okay. That's a resolution for this. So, Bill, while you're passing that out, do we have a limit? Are they requesting a? Is there a limit that we're looking in the sales and use tax extension? 
There is absolutely. Can we, can we disclose that? Sure, of course. Ahead. Absolutely. Uh, a million nine fifty. A million nine hundred and fifty. Yes. Yeah, that's eight point one two five percent of the twenty four million dollars. Thank budget. you. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, the only other thing I would like to add is that I'm glad that the town or whatever, like Bill had said, that there's working something out with the companies or whatever. I'm more comfortable with that. That the report to the to the town and they had some. Uh, the uh, supervisor had a couple of negative things to say, but um, I, I think also to reiterate what Michael said that the numbers for cost benefit are so, the ratios is so great, it really seems to be a no brainer. Um, but could someone explain to me what, like what ratios and where would a ratio, obviously this is a very high ratio, right? What, what is a ratio that would be something you'd say is, is close or not close? Would it be? Three to one, it really isn't one. I mean, even three to one, right? You're, it's a benefit, correct? I mean, so the, the correct. And what it's very specific. So, I mean, it, it depends. That's like saying, you know, you could do a residential project, right? Like a, a commercial um, residential project. Okay, that's not creating jobs, right? You maybe have a, a one security guard or a cleaning person, but that's filling a need in your community. And so, that cost ratio is going to look a lot different than this cost ratio, but that doesn't mean it's not. Okay. It's not. So it's, it's a case. I, I apologize. Case. Okay. It's no, jobs no, and wages. Question, it's all jobs and wages. I mean, there's the, there's the big uh, number coming in, and I'll expound upon what uh, Dean said. You know, it's unfortunate that some elected officials um, still bring up the fact about um, a litmus test or a means-based test, and that's not part of the legislation. Uh, we want. Fortune 500 companies. We want companies that are going to be able to not only invest but maintain and hopefully someday expand. Um, so I know that it was a slight negative comment that some of the elected officials have made in the past. Um, and I think it's just, uh, uh, I think they just need to have some more knowledge of the basic enabling legislation that allows it. We don't have a litmus test. It's not that, uh, um, you know, it's not part of the legislation. So. And Sue, if you can clarify, it's not incumbent upon us to determine whether or not the, the, the uh, applicant truly needs it. It's on them. Am I wrong? It, they say that, that they it's on the applicant, I should say. The applicant verifies under penalty of perjury that they need the benefit, or they, in this case, they will go to another state. Mm -hmm. And that's not on you rely on the verified application. The legislature several years ago. Um, required IDAs to amend their application to include um, a statement under penalty of perjury, there's several of them. Um, so you get to rely on their application. They can look at the law, they can decide, but they have told you that, that you are competing with another state for this problem. And they, what they're saying to you is, but for these benefits, they're going somewhere else. Sure. So that's a 200 job loss to this community. Okay, any further comments, questions? With that, I'll entertain a motion. Um, may, I, may I do the motion? Please. Okay, so there's two resolutions in your agenda with respect to this project. And the first one is what's called a CEPA resolution. Okay. And I know that this may be new to some of you. Um, a CEPA is the State Environmental Quality Review Act. And every public body who is being asked to take any action is required to do a CEPA review. Many of your projects that you've experienced in the past, if another entity has already performed a speaker on what you're being asked to do, you don't have to do it yourself. You get to rely on that other agency. In this instance, it's because Walgreens is not building this facility, so no town or zoning or there were no permitting issues. This is the first time Walgreens is coming before a public body. And you are being asked to approve benefits, and therefore, under seeker, that triggers your obligation to review. So, what that means is the applicant submits what's called an EAF, which is an environmental assessment form. The applicant did that. My office reviewed it. I, I will, in full disclosure, it wasn't me. One of my partners does the seeker reviews um, with respect to the idea work. It was classified as what's called an unlisted action, which means there wasn't a significant amount of dirt move or the space was not large enough or there weren't other factors that triggered a higher level of review. 
it was determined that it was unlisted and that the action um, and the project being undertaken will not have a significant environmental impact. So this body will issue what's called a neg deck, a negative declaration. There are no significant um, impacts and it is attached to your resolution. So the first motion is to put the speaker I think so, so it was with planning board experience. Yeah, so, so we're the lead agency then? Yeah, for an uncoordinated review. Okay. And there's no town involved. No. Okay. Because it's just a lease. It's because just it's just a lease. lease. They're okay. not doing the right. Okay. Yeah. They have approved the building. Right. Yeah, they, yeah, they have already approved matrix to right. what they're doing. Yeah, right. the and they would have done seeker through that. Right. But yeah. Originally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But that's a little bit different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. <clears throat> so we need a motion to approve these. Yes, we do. We'll like to get that. We'll make that motion. All right. Oh. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll second. Thank you, Dean. Any further discussion? Roll call. <laughs> I'm sorry, but on projects, <laughs> on projects we're going to do it because it's, it's down to, you know, I, I, we need to know the specific thing. For sure. Michael Terrell. Yes. Dean Tambor. Yes. Vincent Oda. Yes. Susan Walski. Yes. O. Kennedy. Yes. Noel Spencer. Yes. Five eyes. Six. Six, six eyes. Sorry. My math is off. <laughs> okay. So Noel Spencer now that analysis was done, secret resolution. And then you want to lead us to the final resolution? Yes. So the last resolution in your agenda with respect to this project is the final resolution. And this resolution authorizes um, this agency to undertake the project. It appoints the company as your agent for purposes of undertaking the project and benefiting from the sales and use tax. It authorizes $1,950,000 in sales and use tax. It authorizes the execution and delivery of any documents necessary to effectuate the conference of that financial assistance. I will note, as you've heard earlier, the public hearing was held, the minutes of that were provided in the packet, and this project does create 200 new jobs um, for this area. Great. Questions? Concerns? I'd like to make a motion to uh, accept the final resolution. I'll make that motion. We get a second? Yes. Thank you, Vince. Any further discussion? Roll call, Bill? Torelli? Yes. Tamburi? Yes. Oda? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Walski? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Six eyes. Okay. So, Bill, we have uh, the next three items are all kind of the same, we've noticed. So, if you can give us an overview, even though there's really specific projects of exactly what this is about and what, what we're looking to do initially. This is the first time they're coming in front of you. Yes, correct. It's the first time we're, we're all here about this at the same time. You have three separate applications, and I have copies right here. If anyone has them, I like to pan them out quickly. Uh, one, two, and three. I'm going to get it in reverse order. So. Part of the agenda there. Yes. Yes. So um, the application is for West Warwick Energy Storage uh, LLC. That is the entity that is uh, applying. It's Convergent Energy, and these are battery storage projects. Uh, three almost identical uh, projects in the town of Warwick, two on Warwick Schools property, one on private, you're good, one on uh, private property um, elsewhere in the village. And uh, they are each about $7.7 .7 million projects. Uh, not there, this is not a job creator. Uh, the benefits uh, that they describe is affordable power uh, to the region, uh, reliability, less dependence upon. Uh, peak power systems and such, uh, representing, and, and again, there are three separate projects, obviously same applicant. Uh, and we have two representatives. We have Mr. Daniel Spitzer, who is attorney with Hobson Russ, uh, representing uh, this applicant. And we also have, uh, from Convergent, uh, we have uh, Kristen Kurilak joining us as well. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, when you're ready, I invite them to, to give a little more background on the, uh, the projects. Great. And if they do, can you give us what they're looking to do? Absolutely. What level of the state you're at? What you looking for us? Absolutely. Dan and Kristen, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you can, please, we'd love whoever wants to start, just give a little background information on the project uh, um, when you're ready. 
you have done a wonderful job <laughs> providing background on the, the projects. Um, and thank you all for letting us join you tonight. Um, so we're applying for financial assistance for three energy storage projects, as was mentioned. Um, each of these are on vacant land. One is behind the school bus depot at a local school in Warwick, and the other is on vacant land behind an industrial parking lot, also in Warwick. Um, and really the benefit here, as you stated, is to the local utility providing grid services as well as hopefully providing additional benefits to the local community from a cost perspective. Great. I would add to that in terms of the, the, the low cost power, you're aware that there's a lot of efforts in the state to um, uh, improve the grid for things like electric cars and other health benefits that are associated with renewable energy. You cannot achieve those goals without energy storage um, uh, supplementing the grid. And um, they, uh, the energy storage projects that are now uh, being proposed here as well as elsewhere in the state sort of support all of these efforts to move to off of fossil fuels. Um, they all have become more important um, uh, as, as we um, have, have uh, uh, closed down certain plants that were uh, polluting, particularly in environmental justice areas. And as the effort is uh, made to improve the grid and to move to um, uh, this county, uh, you may be aware, I expect all of you are aware uh, from just reading the papers, Orange County probably has more solar projects than any county in the state. Um, I've done over 20 in your county. And um, these projects are, are the energy storage that Convergent is bringing forward are, are essential to supporting um, the efforts to, to um, uh, provide of those projects to provide lower cost power to the community as well as cleaner power. Thank you, Dan. Great. And I will clarify that what's before you today, I'm uh, handing out resolutions for each of these projects and really looking for you to authorize public hearings for each of these. That's the stage that we're at right now. I got a free rate. I, I got the copies, might as well use these trees that we, we sacrificed. So, for the benefit of the board members, if you're not aware, um, in addition, there are two conditions precedent to any IDA being able to take action on any project. One of them is you have to hold a public meeting if the benefits being sought are above $100,000, which every project is <laughs> for you will call my expert because it doesn't make sense for a project to come to you. <coughs> so you have to hold a public hearing. So the first thing you're ever going to be asked to do is offer a public hearing. It does not commit you to providing benefits. It is just you got to get through the door. The second thing you will see once you once you hold a public hearing, the next round of approvals will involve speaker in one way or another. Either you do it yourself or another agency will have done it, but speaker will be the next thing you approve, followed by other resolutions to consider convergence. So the public hearing stage, which is where we're at right now, is you can't even get your ticket to get in the door, so to speak. So, and I, I want to just say two other things. Each of these projects is a separate LLC, a single purpose LLC created to develop that particular storage facility. That is why you have three applications. They are three separate deals. They may all be the you know, same nature and they're obviously related companies, but you are to vote on them as three separate transactions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bill, in the future uh, also, well, doesn't need to be today, We'd also like to have the board understand what the fee structure would be. Um, so while we're not at that point yet, I know there's an application thing that's based on capital investment and all that stuff like that, but something that we could maybe like a cheat sheet, one page or memo from staff to board members so that we understand what our uh, potential fees would be for that. That's uh, not that we have to approve it because it's basically part of our schedule of charges, right. just so that we can understand. Well, one, I'd like you to understand it, of course, and it's something we we talk about analyzing and perhaps making some changes to the door so we remain competitive out there. So absolutely, that would be the first step. I feel like everyone in and we'll take it from there. Definitely. The other thing that we ask staff to do, just so everyone knows, is to meet with the local municipality, uh, the elected leaders in that municipality to make sure that uh, while we're only in the initial stage now, Bill will have a discussion with whichever municipality these projects are in. In this instance, I believe Town of Warwick will Yes, sir. Yeah, um, and we've had great work relations with them in the past and we want to just bounce stuff off of them, make sure and try to, you know, give them all the data that we have so that they're aware of it. 
They are probably already aware of it going through the planning board process anyway. But this is another perspective that, that we do. Um, and obviously, uh, when we do public hearings, they, most of the time you'll see uh, the elected officials usually are the ones that come out in support of it, uh, as well as economic development agencies and everyone else that potentially could potentially benefit from it. So, um, so that's great. Um, anything else that we need? I do have a quick question. Is based on the, is this is on school property, correct? So do they do they have to come through the planning board? I was going to say that for the next. I thought you were going to ask me about their real property. Okay, no, but they're not on the planning board agenda, right? For the town of Warwick, because they're on school property, correct? They still need to. They will eventually have to. Okay. And their council. Yeah, I would like that. They're structuring this ground rules. Okay. And the the convergent already had the lease with the school district. They're bifurcating that leads to go to LLC one and LLC two. Right. And then I assume, and those LL, the assessor has agreed because the property is tax exempt. So you're thinking to yourself, why are they asking us for a pilot, mm -hmm. which is one of the benefits they're seeking. But the assessor for, um, has agreed that he is going to separately assess the improvement and assign it a tax parcel ID number, like you have a we have a cooperative. We have a cooperative municipality. Right. Gotcha. So yep. I assume as part of that process, it will get the permitting it needs to do it. That's my assumption. I'm not part of that side of the transaction, but that is my suspicion. Okay. I do know that I, you. what I'm telling you about the lease is accurate because I raised the question and had it. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the other things, Bo, I think I'm not sure if anyone else is on a planning board. I'm on a planning board as well. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Chair, I, Mr. Chair, just had a couple of questions. Hold um, on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to go that through. No. Yeah, and just yeah that's me. That's me. Um, I saw. Hold on a minute. Oh, no, oh, hold on. I'm trying to finish the point. Okay, sorry, sorry. I thought you was sorry. Um, we're on. You're on a planning board, for When I right. remember reading your resume, I'm also on a planning board. Sure. And I don't believe uh, I've gone through council my planning board as well as talking to our our council about how that's not a company. We don't. Right. As long as you don't have a, 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 a financial benefit. We're just volunteering, probably too much, yeah. doing too many things. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I'm less of concerned about being on a public um, body that also helps review projects. Sure. Not only on this one, as long as there's not a financial and or a, per, or a perception of it, whether it's you, whether it's me, whether it's our families or anybody sure. else's. Um, so just be cognizant of that. No, and we'll, absolutely. And, and you'll get a lot of that during, our, I think, our training and a lot of the stuff you're going to go out of that. Your potential conflicts of interest and such, but sure. that was a concern of mine. Someone that knows the coaching plan, yeah, yeah. But I just have a distinct uh, thing, just like you. So, yep. okay, I'm just to make sure that you felt comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very so, good. So then, and then my only question was, I, I saw it was on a school or whatever, but that's not for our say whether my first thought was like putting this on a school property or whatever, but it's not for us to. That would be the plan boards and the municipalities to. Uh, or not approved. Approved. Not correct. Thank you. And that, and that, if sorry with them, then if if they um, qualify for the benefits, or whatever, then they qualify. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Can I, can sure. I say something? Sure. <laughs> so, in your transactional documents, when they execute whatever document they need to for us to confer the benefit, those documents will include all kinds of reps and warranties. And the company will have to rep and warrant to this board that they have received all necessary approvals, that the action they're taking is legal, you know, et cetera, et cetera, for that very reason. Now, I did raise the question with counsel, but that's just because it triggered in my own mind. But yes, you're right. It is up to the local, you know, you get your permits. We're good, but that's not our job. And then transactionally speaking, since they're not going to be the owner of the property, the owner would also take part in Signing a sales and leaseback transaction eventually or something? Or? They, they don't have to because your assessor is giving them a separate oh, okay, that's like perfect. Number. So it will be perfect. a sub lease so. and a sub sub lease. Okay. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the concern. Do we have any uh, questions of their counsel in terms no. of their? I don't. I mean, we'll have no one. I don't know wants to speak. So yes. go ahead, Noel. Okay, good. Um, maybe this is not relevant to here. But I read in the document that two things that you were getting a lease, but it didn't state the life of the lease. Is it a 99 year lease or um, the period? I don't know if it's relevant to this. Since we're since we have given them some time a tax break, is it enough time in that lease for us to recoup it? That was the first one. 
So, so going to um, explain that. with your permission, Mr. Chairman, yeah, um, the with the school leases, they are governed by the education law. They can be no more than uh, ten year leases with a ten year renewal, and I believe that's the lease term. Uh, Karen, uh, Kristen's going to correct me if I say it wrong. I believe the other lease is a twenty five year lease with up to four renewals up to 45 years. What you generally will see in New York um, is that very, very few leases for projects will ever go past 49 years, because if you do, then you have to pay transfer tax on a lease as if it was a sale of the property. So when we deal with these projects, we have two sets of rules, the education law and the transfer tax law that sort of set the terms, in this case, 20 years for the two school projects, uh, 45 years for the um, other project. And Kristen's going to correct me if I got any of that wrong. No, it's correct. It just the only thing I would notice is that they have the option to extend, right? So like if we start with a 10 year, they always have the option to extend at that point. And then the same thing is true for the private property. Very, very educational. Very, very educational. Uh, the other one that I picked up on, it said, paraphrasing me, that this project would not be possible without our assistance from the IDA. So I think it's a two part question, but let me go with the first part. What is the projected break even period since you have these 10 year leases and 25 year leases? I don't know that we really pencil these out in terms of a, a break even period, sir. We look at um, when we decide to go for IDA financing. The IDA rules um, require that an IDA not um, finance a project unless it needs financial assistance. So we have an inability to build this project paying what would otherwise be the full cost, if you will, um, in the areas that we're asking financial assistance. We wouldn't build it without your assistance. And, but we don't really necessarily put it in terms of a break even like, for example, if you were looking at putting a storage unit in your own home, one of the things you'd wanna know from Powerwall, who's ever, or Tesla, is how many years is it gonna take for me to recover the cost of this? We don't really look at things that way because this is a for-profit um, project that's designed to make money um, pretty much throughout the whole project. So we looked, we penciled the whole life of the lease as when we then, go to investors and securitize this and sell this to investors and offer them a rate of return, just as when we go to the um, folks who we hope to buy the energy and offer them a discount from their current energy in order to provide that. We look at it as a whole over the life of the project. Um, Kristen, anything I left out of that uh, methodology, but I, I don't think we really look at it from a break-even point of view at some point. No, I agree. There's also just a lot of unknowns, as you can imagine, with all the different policy changes. So it's really very challenging to say where that point would be. No, well, very good answer is what I'll say, because when you talk about uh, going to your investors, now that gives me a better feel. So I was just looking at the, the, the assistance you're looking for and when would, it, when would we see um, our value equated to what you're doing. But with your explanation there, um, I see where you're coming from. So it's you and your board and your investors that will have a happy day. Well, certainly though, hopefully the benefit you would see as soon as the projects are operational, right? The whole idea is that we're providing grid resiliency in that area because it's, it's an area of need. Um, this actually came about through an RFP through the local utility and they basically identified this area as a need area. So really once the projects are operational, in theory, we're providing our, our benefit. Okay. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, additionally, there you you are required to pay special district charges immediately, so you're going to be making the municipality whole in that regard. Uh, so there's an immediate benefits. So there's tax benefits. There's you know, construction job benefits. There'll be a whole cost benefit analysis and breakdown. Absolutely. As we get into the details. Right. Mr. Chairman, I have a subsequent question. Um, I didn't have enough time to do a a research on this company. So can we get a, a, a executive background on what I hear about the power, but can I get an executive background on everything that they are bringing to our area? An executive background. Summary, executive oh, summary okay. rather. Like in, in, in two minutes. The applications are gonna be the detail of the project. 
Right. Would you, would you like the applicant to provide further details? Yes, because yeah, I, I didn't have time to go through all these pages. So I see convergent West Warwick. I hear what they're saying, but um, this is information I'm getting. Like it's um, it's a corporation that is going to be um, selling shares. But what are the and what is the summary of things they're bringing to a community? I'm not sure what all the products are. That's what I just needed to get that comfort zone. Yeah, sorry. So maybe we should just take a quick step back. Putting the financial piece aside, what we do is we own and operate battery systems. So okay. our entire company is dedicated to building, owning, and then operating for the life of the contract that battery. And, and the whole objective is providing, again, grid, grid services, right? So in theory, we could be tying into a private property and we could be providing services to that property, but our main business model is providing them back to the grid so that we're impacting an entire community rather than just one property. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Uh, why are you not adding any jobs to the community? Yeah, it's a great question. So really, we we are in theory, but only for a very short period of time, right? So during the construction of the battery system, there certainly would be additional jobs, but that very rarely goes beyond a six month period, maybe a year at you know max. And after that, they're really all automated. It's it's all software. Um, so you know that's something that somebody like myself would do, and I'm already employed. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah. so, it, so it would not be local jobs then. There would be somebody, um, some remote area using the software to keep it going. That's right. Okay. So in, in reality, you know, what is created is really quite temporary, but certainly for that, you know, temporary period when we are hiring construction, you know, type jobs, we absolutely plan to seek those from the local community. Okay. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Okay. Picture of question. And I think what probably was trying to find out is uh, something related to the executive summary you mentioned. You probably trying to find out something related to economic impact study of economic impact study. Uh, it is related to what you were asking. Yes, close to that. Yes. Okay. Very much close. Cool. Yeah, so there are a number of environment, uh, economic impacts, and um, I understand that you've now chosen a new model, and you'll be doing a cost-benefit analysis, and we'll cover that. There's a number of impacts. Obviously, there's the um, money that we'll pay to the IDA, not just for the application fee, for, but for the admin fee. There's also uh, the um, impacts of the construction jobs, which, as uh, Kristen mentioned, we try to hire locally as much as possible. Uh, we will source any construction materials we can locally. Obviously, the biggest part of these projects is batteries, which uh, are not uh, produced locally. Um, but to the extent that we can source any of the construction materials uh, locally, we certainly will. There is a specific benefit in terms of this particular landlord. Every dollar that goes to the school district is a dollar that doesn't for rent doesn't have to uh, uh, raise taxes. So it's a direct tax savings because of who this landlord is. There are also savings that are more difficult to measure, but I would respectfully suggest a very important. Um, there's a concept called the social cost of carbon that measures what is the resiliency. And we use the New York state measure, not the measure that was just thrown out in the federal courts, but the New York state measure, which they've used for some time to determine that. That's avoided uh, pollution, if you will, is one way to look at it. It's um, uh, also avoided cost of um, the, the rate payers paying for um, increases in the uh, grid stability to, to allow the kind of growth in the grid that electric cars and other things required. All of these have quantifiable values that a uh, um, economic impact analysis can show um, that are very significant. Um, there's a number of, uh, I'm happy to, uh, to work, obviously I'm looking forward to working as is Kristen with your e economic uh, team as you put together that cost benefit analysis. But there's other things well too. Some, um, Kristen mentioned that these don't create long-term jobs. We do have some local jobs. We do mow around them. We do maintain the properties. And if there's any repairs, obviously uh, necessary to the buildings or to, to the electric um, uh, locally, that, that's also a benefit. Um, the energy that is sold from these is often subject to, to taxes. The product, if you will, is not exempt from taxes, only the construction. That product is another product in your economy that could be subject to sales tax. So there's a significant number of streams of uh, benefits that come off of 
these uh, projects, even though they don't have the kind of long-term jobs that maybe a commercial project have. And so about two years ago, and uh, I would ask attorney, the attorney to correct me if I have the date wrong, but the New York State Legislature amended the IDA laws to make it specifically clear that renewable energy projects, notwithstanding that they're not necessarily job creators, are projects that are within the realm and that they indeed encourage IDAs to undertake um, in, in, in carrying out their mission of bringing in projects that but for the IDA would not be in your community. Very good. Great. Um, what? Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, I know this is going into Warwick, but what is the range of the county that you'll be um, utilizing this power system? Is it just the Western? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's less of a question actually for, for us specifically, that's really a utility question, but generally speaking, I can speak to it because it came through utility RFP. Um, so it's basically the entire area that the substation we're impacting in that circuit is benefiting. So that's multiple zip codes across the county. Okay, good, thank you. Very good. All right. Uh, without any further questions, I'd like to entertain a motion um, on these individually. Can we do them as a whole? We do them individually. Do them individually. All right. So, uh, West Warwick Energy Storage One. I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, allow us for the resolution to go and approve a public hearing for this potential project. I move. Thank you, Lo. Second. Second. Thank you, Dean. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nay? One. Okay. Want to discuss? Yes. Okay, please. Uh, I would like the opportunity to further research these types of projects, what other projects like this are going on in the county that haven't come before the IDA. I do know there are other storage. So I would just like to table this until we can have another meeting and some time to spend allowed to research these projects. So with a motion to table, we'd have to vote on that, right? I'm sorry. No, no, no. May, you're, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I point out something? Yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, with your permission, sir. Um, obviously holding a, calling for a public hearing is not in any way committing this board to supporting these projects. Um, it, it's calling for the public input, which can be part of any, any research effort. Um, the um, uh, problem with delay, to be honest with you, is that these batteries have a long-term uh, time where you have to order them in advance. And um, you have to have the sales tax exemption in place uh, prior to um, the um, uh, project uh, close, as you know, in terms of, for those who are not familiar, the sales tax exemption has to be granted before you take delivery of the batteries. And we're at the point of ordering the batteries. Um, and if this was delayed, um, we, look, we literally could lose these projects. Frankly, the batteries could go elsewhere. If you, when you research Convergent, you'll see there's a very large company that does projects all over the world. Um, and I, we would be delighted to come out and meet with anyone who wants to talk about any other storage projects that are going on. I'm not aware of any other energy storage projects in your county that are not, that are not part of solar projects um, and therefore have different exemptions um, or, in, or uh, other reasons. Um, but we could certainly address any questions and demonstrate to you financially why this is indeed a but for situation, but for your assistance, they won't get built. And I would hope that the board would not uh, delay the initial step of calling for the public hearing um, because it frankly um, may uh, have a serious detriment to, the, to, to this project because of the unique nature. All of you I'm sure are aware of what's going on cost-wise due to supply chains and uh, the steel and the like in terms of cost. You've already discussed that tonight and more than happy to provide any research uh, answers uh, before you vote. But I would hope that we could get this initial step off, the, uh, as your attorney called it, uh, through the door, get public comment going, get research going, so that we don't uh, delay the projects unnecessarily. And I thank you for your consideration of that point of view. Thank you. So with any discussion, would you like to ask any, qu any further questions? No, like I said, I'd like you know, to do some due diligence. That's my big thing is, you know, and I appreciate the applicants coming before this board and trying to keep us 
process moving forward. I just don't feel comfortable at this point passing a resolution for a public hearing without further understanding these projects and the impact. Okay. Is there any specific questions that you'd like to ask about impact, like in general? Well, I want to know. He's saying he doesn't know of any, but I want to know why there are other similar projects in Orange County going on that are like this that have not come before IDAs. You know, there are local IDAs that may have these projects that we're not aware of. So are there other companies looking for these benefits as well? Or is he the only one? Okay. Are you, you know, talking about you... standalone storage projects, ma'am, that in your county? Because I'm only aware, and I, I certainly don't claim to know every project in Orange County, I'm only aware of, of storage projects that are uh, coupled with solar. Um, and uh, most of those have, um, uh, can get, they can get pilots on the 487. If we go, if we were on the 487 in some of the towns, there are no pilots on the 487 for standalone storage. So it's actually better to go through an IDA for the local communities. Um, so uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about any projects. I, I, it's interesting to hear that there are standalone storage in the county um, that are not going through the IDA. Well, that's like I said, that's what I would like to research and find out. We do have several smaller IDAs within this county that companies may have gone before and circumvented this IDA. So I'd like the time to reach out sure. and find so that. I'd like to just make a quick comment on that. Um, we have taken a position historically that if there is a local IDA within Orange County, and they want to do a project that they don't have, there's no IDA shopping per se, per se. So what happens is we've identified those IDAs and they're allowed to do their, you know, to do their projects, but they don't report to us. They have their own reporting requirement. If they need not to, they can kick it to us if they don't, if they think it's too complex or such. Well, but in this instance, I'm not sure who will do that research for. Uh, and I'm just saying, if there, are, if there are companies that are out there that are producing this, these battery storages, and they're not using IDA money, you know, why would we spend our money if we don't have to? There are companies who are capable of doing this without our incentive. Okay. Does that make sense? I'm not getting it. I'm sorry, because we're not well, spending Well, I could just research, you know, the yeah. six months worth of, you know, people who have town's planning board meetings to see if there's any projects coming up, if anything has been pitched to a town. I, I can't answer that. Because there's a company called GlidePath. I believe they're doing storage units. I know they have uh, an agreement with uh, some local uh, labor, but from Sawbreeze to Kingston, and I believe there's two in Orange County. Now, I, I made a note to find out if there was idea benefits on any of those. I don't know that, though. I made it back. Well, and that's what that. I'm saying. That's what my question but again, is. But, but I, I understand what you're, you're saying, and I, I, will, I will almost go back to um, whether it's the go back to the previous project. Is we talk about it, and again, you have that feeling. Well, maybe they don't need it or whatever. But this is something that if they qualify, if they qualify, unfortunately, it's not really for us. I don't think anyway to find out what their financial status is or whatever. But if they qualify and the local um, want these projects, I, I, I think that's our our role anyway. I'm thinking, but I, I understand exactly what you're saying. So, uh, and I'm just you know. We're saying that these projects, the applicant is saying that these projects cannot go forward without IDA assistance. That, that's, to them. that's their make or break point. And I'm saying if there are projects that can do this without IDA assistance, why would we assist one but others have been able to do without? So um, as a point of order, yes, um, there was a motion made to approve the public hearing and it was Seconded, a vote was taken in the Susan abstain, or voted no. I thought she voted no. I believe the motion still carries. Having so having said that, this period, so I think that you got the authorization to hold a public hearing. But I think between now and next time, when you will vote to give or not give benefits, all of this can be discussed at that time. And certainly in between now and then, exactly what you're suggesting to do is research. Right? Mr. Chairman? Yes. No. Uh, based on what Susan is saying, and this is a motion and a vote for public hearing, uh, is this an open door that after the public hearing, 
it goes right through as our to the legal counsel has public hearings diffused a project going forward basically stopping it after the public hearing kids i think that's what are you, go ahead are you asking if um you can not undertake a project you can refuse to undertake it or give benefits after the public hearing is held that's what yes i think absolutely yes. Okay, you answered me. Okay, great. So I think yeah. that should make Susan feel um, a little more confident that. Oh, I, that. <laughs> right. Absolutely. A public hearing in no way commits approvals of this board for any financial assistance. It literally is a condition precedent to you consider getting that. Thank you. Yeah. Any further questions? We have the second resolution for West Warwick Energy Storage Number Two. Um, uh, if there's no further discussion, I'd like to entertain a motion in regards to West Warwick Energy Number Two. So moved. I'll make that. Thank right. you. Well, second, no. Yes. Um, all, ball, please. No. Torelli. Yes. Tambury. Yes. Odak. Yes. Walski. No. Kennedy. Yes. Spencer. Yes. Five eyes, one no. Okay. Any further discussion on Warwick, West Warwick Energy Storage number three? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Vince, I'll second that. Any further discussion? With that, roll call, please. Torelli? Yes. Tambury? Yes. Walski? No. Odok? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Five, <laughs> Our thanks to the board for its consideration. We're really looking forward to working with the board and its staff on these uh, very good questions. These, I've, I've done a lot of these hearings. These were really good questions. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have a good thanks. night. Thanks. Uh, all right. Um, no other further additions to the agenda. We have two more items, uh, Bill, uh, both of you uh, on your topics, so local labor audit. Yeah, in the interest of time, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask if we could table these to next month. The uh, local labor audit, I did a comparative analysis, and I have to say it's it's very close. It's not like the CPA analysis where it seemed quite obvious with a couple of uh, prime choices. I really need to dig in deeper with the board and share some other uh, extenuating uh, factors. Uh, I'd like to go into that. As far as shovel ready, I've kind of alluded to this before. Uh, the first step in this, and I, and I will uh, talk to the board members about this soon. I uh, met yesterday. And yesterday. And uh, two days ago, two Walski? Uh, two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. Oh, yes. Was it yesterday? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, I'd like to explain to them, you know, the, the background on and the intent of shovel ready. But what I intend to do next month is come with a, a draft of an RFQ, a request for qualifications, uh, where we'll be looking to do a property analysis, really a site analysis. What sites are available in Orange County? What's, what are their status? What infrastructure do they have? What other amenities do they have? which need improvement, which need additional infrastructure. And we'll therefore identify the opportunities for us to maybe play a role in making sites uh, uh, more shovel ready and, and, and ready to attract the kinds of projects we want. So I'd like to come back next month and, and provide a draft at our RFQ and get feedback from the board on that. Great, thank you. Bill. Any further unfinished business? Questions of the board before we go into executive session? Uh, yes, one unfinished business. Yes, I, I think that there is a request to approve um, two new officers. Okay. Um, secretary would be Dr. Oda, and Mr. Tambury has agreed to be vice chair. So I think that is a motion that we're looking for the board to approve the appointment of those two officers. The bill slots that are vacant from the resignation of prior board members. Okay, so we'll make a motion then. We'll make that motion. Oh. Well, second. <laughs> what was it again? Secretary was inside. Vince. Oh. Vince was secretary? Yes. Yes. Mr. Chair. Who replaces the assistant secretary? I can't hear you. We, we don't have that position filled yet. 
Okay. So we have a vote. Did the uh, initial yeah. Dean second it? Right. Any discussion? Done. With that, uh, we'll take the roll call, Bill. Sure. Torelli. Yes. Danbury. Yes. Odoc. That would. Come on, Yes. 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 Yes, good. You deserve it. Uh, Kennedy. Yes. Spencer. Yes. Six odds. Congratulations. Any other Okay. At this time, I'd like to uh, uh, get a motion to go into executive session. In regards to an update on potential litigation and to have attorney kind of privilege discussion in regards to subject matter. Uh, Mr. Chair, just one observation. Um, did that's a question. I'm not sure if everybody did the oath of office with the county clerk. Yeah, no, I did mine today. I did mine as well. Good, good. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure we all are transparent and following <laughs> the rules that we have in place. Yeah, we can file with the Secretary of State if one has to. So, was I supposed to do? I don't know if somebody was supposed to count, was I supposed to count, was I supposed to see something? I didn't see it. You got something in the mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, right, it's right upstairs. So, uh, just like we did when we first got a committee, you got to go to the county clerk, sign your name, put your hand up. Yeah, we don't. Gotcha. No, no, no. no I, 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 I do have to. Yeah, it's in my name. Yeah, well, I don't think that's an issue at this point. And I do have other paperwork to sign, by the way. Uh, certificate of independence, conflict of interest. So I have those with me for if you can stay afterwards. So I'll get to you. I'll, I'll be right you. down. I'll be right down. Okay. I'll get you. I'll get you. Yeah, far. <laughs> okay. Well, to executive session, uh, we need to get assistance from uh, Dennis or Dean Brady for getting us into executive session. Great, thank you. We've just closed out the Orange County IDA meeting.